Raditz has joined his brother after seeing the extent of potential damage if he returns to Vegeta. So now, the Saiyan low class and elites are in war. My name is Michael from Vegeta T23 and welcome to part 3 of what if Goku agreed to become the Earth's Guardian. Before we start, check out the previous parts to keep yourself updated on the series. And with that, let's begin. Raditz at this point doesn't want to die and neither does Goku, so they're brainstorming as to how and where they will train up. Raditz suggests that they need to train for about a year and a half constantly until they're ready. However, Goku remembers Kami going someplace and then coming back, saying that he went to the other world. Raditz is quite amused, but says that this is a dumb idea. However, Goku knows exactly who to talk to. So in the meantime, Raditz is left with Krillin, Yamcha and the others to train up with him, while Goku is going to visit Fortune Teller Baba. Goku knows that she can revive someone at least for 24 hours. And since Kami said that there are some deities up there, Goku thinks there might be someone who can help him train up, both him and Raditz. And so with that, he asks Fortune Teller Baba to give him a lift to the other world, as he needs to talk to someone. Fortune Teller Baba agrees and takes Goku along. Over there, Goku meets King Yama, and King Yama is quite surprised that Goku came along congratulating him on the spot as the Earth's Guardian. Goku expresses his gratitude, but then moves on to more important bits, how he needs to train up and if there's one place that he will be able to train properly is here. King Yamba receives his request and then mentions King Kai. King Kai is basically like a deity that lives on a small little planet at the end of Snake Way. He possesses a skill known as Kaioken, which not a lot of people know about. Goku is pleased with the answer and then goes back with Fortune Teller Baba. And then back at the lookout, Goku tells Raditz everything about his trip. He says that he found someone called King Kai and that they may be able to train over at his place. Raditz is ecstatic, but doesn't know the whole point of going there. Goku says there is a secret technique called the Kaioken, which is only unique to the Kais. Raditz is quite intrigued, so he goes along with the plan. As for the other Z fighters, Goku tells them that there is a time chamber and that they can use it so that they could train up. Mr. Popo will guide them while they're training. With all that commotion, Goku and Raditz visit Fortune Teller Baba and then they go back to the other world. Over there, Goku asks King Yema to give him directions, and the Snake Way is literally right behind him. So Goku and Raditz start their journey. As they're quite a bit more powerful, they start the journey pretty fast, as they can both fly. That means that on the way, they don't encounter the Snake Queen, which means the travel is quite smooth. They get there in about 3 months, and once they land on a the planet, they notice that the gravity is much higher, more specifically Goku, who never experienced such gravity before. Compared to Raditz, who's been basically living on the planet with the same gravity. They look around but they cannot find King Kai until he randomly appears behind them. Goku and Raditz are startled but then they see King Kai in his true form. They're amazed that it's a fat guy. But then King Kai says that not all gods are powerful and mighty and muscly. That they're sometimes just, you know, basic. Goku and Raditz then ask King Kai to train them. However, King Kai doesn't want to train them just yet. First, they have to make him laugh. To Raditz, it's a piece of cake. So, Raditz makes King Kai cry out of laughter. Goku picks that up and combines Raditz's jokes with some of his own. And without a sweat, Goku's jokes also work. With that, they are now King Kai's disciples. The first thing they have to do is to catch the monkey. Which for Raditz is quite easy. But for Goku, it is quite hard for him, since he's not really used to that kind of gravity. From there, all the training with Goku and Raditz go the same, and the squad over at the lookout trains pretty much the same way as they do in canon, just in a time chamber. Before long, a year and a half passes, and there is major improvement in the power of theirs. They can now use Kaioken with almost no issue, 
and even managed to go up to Kaioken times 3, just because they trained together, as they're Saiyans and Saiyans always grow best together. With nothing better to do, Goku and Raditz go back to the lookout. Fortune teller Baba was there to pick them up and after a short time, they come back to Earth. Goku and Raditz thank Fortune Teller Baba and then they go back to the lookout. On the lookout, Tien, Krillin, Chaozi and everyone else were buffed up to the point where they could take on both Goku and Raditz before they left to King Kai. But when it comes to Goku and Raditz, they have just enough power to take both Vegeta and Nappa on. So at this point, the only thing left is to wait for Vegeta and Nappa. The Z fighters are advised not to intervene unless both Goku and Raditz are down. The Z fighters agree and then the waiting game starts. After a short time, Vegeta and Nappa crash on Earth in the outskirts of the city. Goku and Raditz are notified and they go to visit the landing site. They visit Vegeta and Nappa and Goku sees just how different those two are from his brother. Vegeta is cocky and Nappa is trying to be cocky. Raditz then prepares for battle and so does Goku, while Vegeta and Nappa are casually off to the side. Nappa springs into battle and is very confident he can defeat them both. However, Goku and Raditz make quick work of Nappa, to the point where the spinal injury happens pretty much instantly. Vegeta sees that they have grown quite considerably and then he shoots Nappa into the air and destroys him rather quickly. Vegeta then applauds Raditz for getting so much stronger and asks him to get back on the team, along with Kakra. Raditz declines the offer, and Goku says his usual line about poor job security. Vegeta gets super angry and they start the battle. Both Goku and Raditz start in their Kaioken and are flooring Vegeta, while Vegeta is on the ground pleading for mercy. However, the second he's left alone from them, he shoots up a giant powerball into the sky and transforms into a great ape. However, Raditz notices this and goes great ape as well. But considering that Raditz cannot use his Kaioken in his Ozaro form, he's forced to use his Ozaro form only, while Goku is on the ground without tail and without his Ozaru using Kaioken times 4. The battle is intense, with Raditz throwing heavy punches and Goku going for the slick attacks. Slowly but surely, they get the edge on the prince and eventually cut his tail off, resulting in Vegeta going back to base. Vegeta is at this point heavily injured, but that doesn't stop him. He tries his best to throw a Gala gun, but his wounds have heavily depleted his energy, which means the Gala gun is considerably weaker. Goku uses that to his advantage and throws his Kamehameha at him. Goku at this point uses his normal Kaioken and Vegeta is trying hard, trying to gain advantage over Goku. Raditz however breaks up the wave battle and kicks Vegeta down to the ground next to his pace pod. Raditz tells Vegeta not to come back and to just go. Vegeta is angry and knows that he will get his revenge someday, but not today and just goes into his space pod and flies away. Goku and Raditz have saved the Earth from the Saiyans, and the gang is there to congratulate them. Goku thanks Raditz for letting him know and staying with him, knowing that he has a good heart. Raditz doesn't want to admit it, saying that he has destroyed countless planets just because of his own selfless desire. However, Goku tells him that the desire was not due to him but due to the influence of other Saiyans who were way, way worse than him. So at this point, Raditz thanks Goku for getting him out of the circle. Just as they're about to go home, Raditz notices Nappa's scouter, and he picks it up and listens in. He hears Frieza saying that he's going to planet Namek to gain control of their Dragon Balls, so that he could wish for immortality. Goku picks it up, and now, after a gruesome battle, Vegeta had to flee back as to not die. However, the next steps are gonna be discussed in the next part. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment on what shall I do next. Like if you liked the video. Dislike if you want to see a vlog on my channel. 
check out my Discord server in the description below. And as always, peace out.